Uh, fear is a human emotion, is that right? Has anybody been fearful in their life? Uh, I've been fearful a few times. As I've mentioned before, when I was young, uh, I was pretty fearful of heights, and I'm still fearful of heights. And when I was an electrician, there's certain things I wouldn't do, you know, and crawl up on girders over basketball courts and things like that. It's like somebody else could do that. I'm not doing it. If you want to fire me, that's fine but I'm too good for you to fire. So that one little thing you can just get somebody else to do. I'm just teasing over some of that, but <clears throat> you know, that's a fear that, uh, I, ha that I, I had really bad um, going up to Morro Rock and the Sierras. I didn't like it looking over the side and different things like that. But uh, much of the response that uh, we have in life sometimes is based on fear. And that's, that's a human situation from the beginning it's not something that's new, uh, and so uh, we want to look at that because fear uh, it, it is uh, not an encouraging situation. <coughs> Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. I do have uh, allergies, as I said before, and yesterday I was picking up grass and branches outside, taking them to the dump, and it was not fun, and so it, for my allergies and asthma. So I didn't have to use an inhaler, which is good. Uh, so, what we're talking about today is faith over fear. I think that'll, I, I think, yeah, that, and um, a bi biblical or a Bible encouragement in the present troubles. Uh, a lot of what's kind of happening uh, in, with coronavirus and things like that, it, it is based on fear. Um, you know, that's just a, an outside of the box, maybe, statement. Uh, but as you, you look at it, I see a lot of fear there. And some of that fear is good, and we'll talk about that, good fear and bad fear, uh, and, and good things and bad things about fear. Uh, but it, if we live in a state of fear, it's like living in a state of stress. It's like living in a state of anxiety. It's like living in a state in which we, we just don't know what to do and how to walk. And so w the Bible talks about faith, fear, and walking in trouble. If you read the scriptures, um, and not even talking about history like we did a little bit last week, if you, if you read the scriptures, it's, it's like there's trouble from the beginning, you know, and so it, there's a, a, a dynamic uh, of trouble that people deal with scripturally. And as I said, there's, there's kind of two types of fear. That, that you see scripturally, and then just as you, if we look in, in wisdom and look at our, ourselves and look at others, and there, there's kind of two types of fear. There's the bad kind uh, that, that keeps us basically from living well, uh, keeps us from, from doing good. Uh, some people, myself included from time to time, are fearful in terms of witnessing, for instance, and not a good fear. Uh, the Bible in, in Acts uh, 2 uh, actually presents that idea of boldness as a fearlessness. And so th there is the, the, the reality sometimes we walk in fear and we don't do what God wants us to do. So those are type of kind of bad types of fear. There's also good types of fear, uh, a, f a fear that, that keeps us wise uh, that, and a fear uh, that we'll see specifically in terms of a fear of God. And so... We, we, we'll be kind of talking about that as, as we, we go. Fear, number one, fear, um, the, the kind of the sad part of fear. Uh, want to do some interaction about, what are some examples besides the one I gave about being fear of high? Some examples of, of fear that we might have in life. You know, we're kind of, we can interact here a little bit. Fear of bugs. Fear of bugs. Talk about that in a minute. Fear of bugs. Snakes. <coughs> Snakes. Fear of what other people think. Fear of, people think. Mm -hmm. fear of failure. That's, yeah, that's a big one. How about fear of fear itself? <laughs> fear of fear? So, uh, some, one of our presidents talked about that. Nothing but fear, but fear itself. Wasn't that the FDR? Mm -hmm. Right after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Fear of the teacher. Fear of people or evil people. We're going to talk about that too. Um, traffic. Traffic. 
you know, like, and there's a reality in terms of like, like the, the pandemic we're having now. If you look, and as I've mentioned before, my zip code is 75211. Um, there, besides being an article in the paper last week, there's an article in the paper yesterday about 75211 because what they're doing. They're actually sending people out into that zip code, talking to businesses and people about how, how to, to do things safely and so that zip code isn't like higher than all the other places in the whole world. Well, not quite the whole world, but in, in the Dallas County. You know, so there's kind of a, a fear in, I live in a zip code that's really, really, really high. Not this one here, by the way, the one over there. <coughs> Debbie and Jerry and Carol and I and Paul, we all live in that zip code. We live in the south end of it. But. Anything else we can fear? It's kind of a bad example of fear. Well, some of the... I didn't look up anybody. Some of the biblical examples, uh, one is, I didn't hear, I don't think, is like fear of the unknown, right? What's going to happen? Somebody said future. It, what's that? Somebody said future. Future, yeah. yeah. Future. Um, and, and that fear of the unknown is really broad. For instance, the disciples had a fear of the unknown, right? When, they, when Jesus uh, was walking across the water, uh, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, you remember they, they were ministering and then they got in a boat and they went out and then a little while later Jesus comes to the boat walking on the water, you know, like Jesus can do. And Peter, unless he's, you know, doesn't have faith, and so he's walking on the water, and this is what they, they say. They were terrified and said it is a ghost and cried out in fear because it was a fear of what, what, what is that person? What, what's this walking across the water? Now, now was, that kind of a, was that kind of a realistic kind of thing for them? Yes. Why was it a realistic kind of thing? Yes. What's that? Exactly. One of the things they had seen him do miracles before, and he wasn't he wasn't with them. And but, how many people have they seen walking on the water? You seen anybody walking on the water? No. Here's somebody walking on the water, even though they saw him do miracles, and we'll actually talk about that in a little bit. They they, did, they, they didn't know, and so they were fearful. And you see that a lot with, like, evil spirits, and that's what they thought it was, was some kind of ghost, some kind of evil spirit, uh, witches, and so forth. And <clears throat> I've been thinking about library, because this is kind of time of year I used to kind of go to the library, and so it's like one of the times. And and you go there, and the first stories that you hear from people are stories about witches or evil spirits or things that happened, you know, recently. And, and there's this kind of fear, as it's stated, even with believers. And so there's that fear of the unknown. Fear of what? Evil people? Perhaps evil people. When the men of the place asked about his wife... He said, she is my sister, for he was afraid to say my wife, thinking the men of the place might kill me on account of Rebecca, for she is beautiful. Now, Rebecca was really, was like, re, she was really beautiful, right? And <clears throat> Isaac is going, now, if I, if I go here, you know, it, it's like, I'm afraid these people are going to kill me because of my beautiful wife. Now, all, you know, all of you men that have wives can identify with this beautiful wife thing, right? Mm -hmm. Say yes. yes. And, and it, it's like, it, 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 <clears throat> but what was the fear? It was a fear of people, possibly evil people. Now, of course, he was kind of, had heard stories. I don't know whether he heard stories from his father. I doubt it was his mother because his mother probably had a different view of the whole situation. But, <laughs> you know, because this happened before, right? And so Isaac is going, you know, he's kind of going after, kind of taking after his father and being fearful. 
Not, and it's not a good situation, and the Bible doesn't present that as good, does not even present that fear as, as motivating Isaac to do wise things, but evil things, right? It, Genesis uh, 32, 11, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, uh, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, and he will come and attack me and the mothers and the children. Now, wh wh what was this context? Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob. And so here you have, have this line of, of, of men of faith having fear, right? And here's this Jacob who <clears throat> did, was not the best brother, right? He stole something from his brother. And so he thinks, and he took off, and he thinks that when he, they come together that, that his brother is going to kill him. So he walks in fear. And that doesn't really motivate him to do good things either. It doesn't motivate him to be wise. It motivates him to not walk as he should. Uh, fear we might be found out. In John 3, it says, For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Uh, Adam and Eve, what, what happened with them? They were hiding for fear that somebody would see them. Right, God. But he who practices the truth, the next verse, but he who practices the truth comes to the light so that the deeds may be manifested as having been wrought in God. So somebody that's walking in the light, is walking in faith, doesn't have this fear because there is nothing that it needs to be hidden. There's no fear of something that's being revealed. It can also be helpful or debilitating, right? What's this? A wasp. A wasp. Um, <clears throat> when I was young, I was walking around a swimming pool, and I felt something uh, on my foot, uh, on the bottom of my foot, and it was starting to hurt really, really bad because I stepped on one of these, and he was continuously stinging me, and so I went and popped it off of my foot, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it, it was uh, a situation where now I can walk in wisdom, how? Watching that, the, watching that I don't step on a wasp around the pool, right? It's like it, it can give you something to be uh, careful about, to be wise about, or it can be I never go to a pool again because I might get stung by a wasp. And sometimes trauma has that, that, that kind of problem with the trauma workshop this last, last Saturday, yesterday and Friday night. And sometimes trauma can, can cause things, and it takes a lot of work to deal, work through those fears because of a, of a traumatic experience. Not that a wasp is traumatic, although it can be. Um, <coughs> we, it, we have wasps sometimes here, and people run away and scream, and not, not really too much. But, but, but th those things can work out to to wisdom or they can be debilitating and something that really needs to be worked through. And, and faith overcomes fear. In the Bible, we see that when, when there's fear, uh, oftentimes uh, faith overcomes that. It's not just, well, if you fear something, just don't worry about it anymore, you know, just have faith. Well, that's really not totally what it is because, like I said, a lot of times it needs to be worked through uh, to, to deal with those things, uh, especially the debilitating things. But, the, but faith really has something to do with fear and overcoming fear. Here is a picture. Uh, does anybody know what this picture is? It's a painting on canvas, oil on canvas. I think it is still, hopefully. And it is, uh, here's Jesus in the stern of the boat. And it was, uh, they, they were, and he's, Jerry said he's sleeping, and he is on a cushion. To, I mean, it was really, very, you know, kind of a well-written um, description of what's happening. Here they are. This is a picture, actually, this, this is painted by Rembrandt, uh, and it was in a museum in uh, Boston. Uh, in 1990, it was actually stolen and never, never recovered, uh, uh, the largest uh, art theft, uh, they think, in the world. 
uh, and they don't know actually where this painting is anymore. The frames are still sitting there with no pictures waiting for them to return. But uh, uh, I don't know what ha that has to do with this. But, but th th they didn't have a fear of getting caught, enough fear of getting caught, so they stole it. Um, on the day, on that day, when evening came, he said to them, let us go to the other side. And leaving with the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And there were, arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat, so that the boat was already filling up. And Jesus was in the stern of the boat, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And here is Jesus, a man that is sleeping in the boat because he's just got through with a bunch of ministry and work and things like that, and he's sleeping, taking a nap. And there's Gale comes up, and he's still sleeping, taking a nap. It, it, it's, it's like the disciples are going, what are you doing? He says, I'm sleeping, taking a nap, Okay. And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And so what happened? And he said to them, because this is a teachable moment, <laughs> here is Jesus in the stern of the boat, great waves and, and storms, which these fishermen are used to but can't do anything about, right? Right? They're fishermen, they're out there, it's not like they're taking a, a, a rowboat out first time. They are fishermen, they know this, this lake, they know this sea. And, and so it's, it, it, they can't do anything about this weather. And he said to them, why are you afraid, fear? Why are you afraid? How is it that you have no faith? You see, faith and fear are connected here very strongly by Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Faith, fear. You see all this stuff, and we can make it a little bit, apply it maybe a little bit more than, than, it, than is really uh, there. But I think this storm picture is big because storms and oceans and stuff are kind of symbolic of sin and all kinds of things in Scripture. And so it's very interesting that that's what's used here several times. And so why are you afraid? Why do you have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Remember that the wind and the sea, they can't make it obey them. But here is somebody sleeping in the stern of the boat that can make the wind and the sea calm. I mean, you would be awed, right? And this gives an indication here. Gives an indication of another part of fear. A fear of this person that they see that has control over stuff they don't have control over. And you see the idea beginning to percolate that this is maybe a divine person. And that fear is beginning to arise in them because this is somebody that has control over weather over the storms. Remember the time that a little bit, a little while ago we were talking about, remember that, the, the, <laughs> the Jesus walking on the water? Remember that? You should, we just talked about it a minute ago. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus was a ghost, right? And Peter, what does he do? Hey, I want to walk on the water too. You know, I want to walk on the water. And he goes, okay, Peter, because you want to walk on the water, why don't you just come on out? And Peter comes out, and then he begins to look at the sea, and the begin of something begins to come up in his heart, fear, because he's looking up. He's not looking at Jesus. It's very interesting. He's, not, he's looking down, and he's looking, not looking at Jesus. And what, what happens? Peter sinks. Right? And what does Jesus say? You of little faith. And what does he do? Grabs his hand and lifts him up. This whole idea of these storms and, and water stuff and water motifs in the scripture, like I said, are kind of big. And, 
and he uses these things to uh, instruct us on who Jesus is and the nature of fear, the nature of faith. What's this? Anybody? The next, next, next one come up, I think. What's that? Hair. Boy, you got that right off, didn't you? Hair. And this, this picture right here proves that Google is sexist. Do you want to know why? You don't care? Just on the side? Because I, I put Google images, I put hair in. Guess what, I, what, guess what came up? Every single image was a woman with hair. I just put hair. I didn't put woman with hair. I didn't put, you know, hair female. I just put hair. Every one came up. I'm not sure what that means exactly, uh, but that's what came up. It's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> maybe their logarithms are not taking sexism into account on that part. So what's this? What does this have to do with anything? Are you not, are not two sparrows sold for a cent and are are yet not one of them who fall to the ground apart from your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Wow, every one of those hairs are numbered for those that God is their father. The relationship of faith. But the very hairs of your head are numbered, so do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Matthew. In Hebrews, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have, for he himself said, I will never desert you, nor will I never forsake you, so that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? That's from Psalms 118.6. It's better to trust God, better to trust God than, than man, Better to trust God than princes in the psalm that they're, he is referring to. Other people, government, you can trust them to a certain extent, but it's better, what, to trust God. If all of our trust is in this world, if all of our trust is in other men, if all of our trust is in government, we are going to walk in fear because our trust is not in the God of the universe that stills the oceans and that created everything. And, and what is one of the biggest fears? I think I heard that. What's one of the biggest fears that, we, that people walk in? Debt. Fear, fear, yeah, debt. Fear, it's money issues. They fear life because of money. There's a fear they're not going to have a job. There's a fear they're not going to have enough money to live. There's a fear. And, some of, and not, not talking about those fears not being real. They are real. They're, they're certainly real. But Paul experienced those too in the same kind of context of finances and money and character. And he says, I know how to get along with humble means. And I also know how to live in prosperity and in, in any and every circumstances, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both having abundance and suffering needs, for I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Okay? And a lot of people, get, people use that one verse out of context. And then there's people who say, oh, you get cooked out of the context. It's only talking about money. And this is one of the, the many all things in, in, in the New Testament and, and it means, despite what some theologians say, it means all things. Okay, so Paul, what he's doing is, is taking a personal experience uh, in terms of finances and his faith in God and how he deals and how he works and how he doesn't walk in fear in terms of those financial things of life. And, and he, then he broadens that out when he uses the term all things. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Now, that evil is not evil necessarily like evil things like be part of it. It's, it's the whole difficulties of life. But you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Again, the rod and staff is often used as discipline. Here, I don't think it's used that way. I think it's used as protection that, God, that the rod and the staff 
of God is protecting. Luke 12. Do not seek what you will eat or what you will drink, and do not keep worrying for all these things. The nations eagerly seek, but your Father knows that you need these things, but seek first His kingdom, and Matthew adds righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. Do not be afraid, little flock. Two verses later. Why, why, why do I bring that up? Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. What's that say? What that says is that we have an assured future by faith. Do not be afraid, little flock. We know what's coming. We know the future. We know the kingdom that we will inherit. And that means we don't be afraid of this world. In the kingdom, here the kingdom I think is our Father in heaven, God the Father. Sometimes the king is Jesus. Here I think that Jesus is referring to God the Father. We're in the kingdom. Fear, the good kind, okay? Now, that's what faith over fear. We, we don't walk in fear. We walk in faith. Now, fear, and this is encouraging, actually, you know, because if we look at this world, I mean, just looking at this world, I mean, it's like the natural response to looking to the world, the sin and the evil in the world is fear, right? I mean, it is like a bad place, even though, you know, we've kind of made it a lot better than it used to be, it's still a bad place. And when things like the pandemic, for instance, come up, we, fit, we find out that we are not God after all, and it's still a bad place. And the fall is still here. But there is a fear, and this is a good kind of fear, and just an aside, kind of thinking about these things, fear can provide a fat pathway to wisdom, right? And that's a little bit of what Shane was talking about. You know, we're not, you know, jumping into fire or whatever, and I don't handle snakes. I hate snakes. That's another thing I don't like, if somebody brought up snakes. Um, but fear can be, provide a pathway to wisdom. I was running up and down the, the field out in front with our lawn tractor the other day, and, and, and it's, this tractor is really good because it can actually turn around, like just turn around, you don't have to back up, just turn around on the sidewalk and come back the other way. But when I'm, I'm going this way, and I'm getting ready to turn around on, on, you know, in, on the sidewalk and go back the other way, what do I do? I'm looking down Ledbetter because even though I know for sure that tractor is going to be can turn around and make that turn, I'm still looking down Ledbetter. Make sure no car, boom, because that's what they do. Boom, you know, and, and if something happens, I lose it, and I, I end up in the middle of the lane on Ledbetter, it's over. And, and what is that? That's a fear, you know, and what does that fear make me do? It makes me look down Ledbetter and make sure there's no car coming. In case something happens, I'm going to get smashed. Okay, so it, it can provide a pathway to wisdom. Now, that fear is not debilitating. That fear pushes us towards wisdom. Fear can motivate us to righteousness. You know, the whole thing about, there is a reality sometimes that this shouldn't happen this way, but it's better that, we're, that we walk in righteousness because of fear than that we have just that we walk in righteousness because that's our character. That's what, that's what our, we strive for. But sometimes, you know, you know I want to walk right because if I don't, it's going to be bad stuff like being out in the middle of Ledbetter getting smashed, but only on a spiritual level because the light is going to come and things are going to be revealed. And, and, and that, that, that is a motivation to righteousness. Not the best motivation for me, um, but it's the motivation for righteousness. And fear is an emotion. And Shane talked talk about emotions. Fear is another emotion. You know, we look at it, we evaluate, look at our expectations, and it can produce actions in our life. Um, the same thing with the, 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 the turning around produces an action in my life. Look to make sure there's no cars coming. You know, that's, that, that, that process is just really fast. Uh, a lot of times it is fast. Sometimes you have to slow it down when we're, we have a fear about something that seems to be we can't 
you know, we need to slow it down. What is that? What's it about? What's the, evaluate that? What's the expectations I have that, you know, that I had to live in a perfect world or whatever it is and, and you know, decide about those, evaluate those expectations and, you know, can produce good actions. So <clears throat> what's the fear of God that we, the fear that we see in the Old Testament all the time? One of them that's a good fear. <clears throat> fear of God, right? You see that a whole lot in the Old Testament. And this is a fear. This And, and a lot of people say, well, that's not really fear. That's like awe. It, it sort of is. And some of the words for fear in the Old Testament are awe, as are the New Testament. You know, it, but he, he, there's also a reality to God is fearful. Okay? And we need to realize that, that, <laughs> that God you kind of look at, at God, and if we didn't have Jesus, it'd be a fearful thing. And, and it's like there is that aspect of Old Testament fear of God, and it's part, and it's part and parcel of faith. He said, I hear the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid. Why? Because he knew God. And he knew God. Here, he had an instinctive reality that when he rebelled against this awesome person that made him, this probably wasn't a good deal for him. He said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad for nothing, do nothing to him, for I know that you fear God, since you have not withhold your son, your only son, from me. It's interesting that the term fear God and God's talking to him, but, you know, leaving that aside a little bit, well, totally. Uh, what, what's, what's happening here? You, you know Abraham is walking by faith most of the time. And God has said, I want you to sacrifice your son. And we know from the New Testament that He's, he's, he had so much trust in God that he figured he was going to raise him up from the dead because he had already promised him that, that Isaac was going to bear him children and big family on down the line. And so he takes Isaac up, begins to sacrifice him, and he says, no. God says, I know you fear God. It's almost equated with faith at that point. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the boys lived, live. Because the midwives feared God, he established households for, for them. In Leviticus, uh, these are just a few. In Leviticus, <clears throat> you shall not wrong one another. You shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. That's Old Testament reference for what I was talking about, is fear sometimes helps us walk in righteousness. Because you fear God. God. Again, there's this combination in, in, in uh, faith combination in here, but there's a fear aspect to it. You're scared. There's a scariness of God. Fear in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. You shall follow the Lord your God and fear Him, and you shall keep His commandments and listen to His voice and serve Him and cling to Him. And Psalms, praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and find great delight in His commands. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Ecclesiastic, in conclusion, as Solomon's looking back over his life, he says, when all have been heard is this fear God, keep His commandments, because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment and everything which is hidden, whether it is good or or evil. Now, some people say, well, that's only in the Old Testament. You know, that's an Old Testament concept to, to, to fear God, right? That's not in the New Testament, because the New Testament is a whole different thing. It's all about love, and it is. God loves us, and, and, and perfect love casts out fear. It, it does cast out the wrong kind of fear, the fear of judgment, because God loves us. We love God. We don't fear judgment. But fear of God is in the New Testament, too. The same kind of idea. And it's not just in the Gospels. In fact, you know, we'll start in Luke. But I will warn you who to fear. 
And Jesus is saying this, fear the one who after he has killed has authority to cast you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. This is really fear. So be a, this is fear him. And who is he talking about? He's not talking about Satan. He's talking about God. God is the one who can cast somebody into hell. He is the only one that can do that. Okay? Nobody else can do that. Vengeance is mine. He's the only one that has all the whole story. And he's the only one that can do it. And you want to fear somebody? Don't fear him that can just do things to you. Fear him who has an eternal judgment in mind and coming. Fear him. And that's Jesus, by the way. And Acts, so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace being built up and going on in the love of the Lord. Okay, I'm not saying anything about, bad about love. Love is huge. You know, God is love. You know, we walk in love. Uh, love God and do what you want. You know, all that kind of stuff. But right here it says, hey, this is after Pentecost. This is a be after the start of the church. Going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. It continued to increase. And be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Paul in Ephesians letter. In the relation to how we work with one another. There's still that aspect there. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, <clears throat> also in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And finally... Jesus says, peace I leave with you, <clears throat> my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give it to you, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Now, why do we end with that? Because that's what Jesus says to us. This, he's talking about the bad kind of fear, the fear that's debilitating, the fear that... that um, does not lead to faith. The fear that kind of keeps us from walking successfully in this fallen world. He says, peace, peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. You know, you look at the world to give you peace. I look at the world to give me peace. Really easy to do that, right? Especially in our 20th century reality where we have conquered nature we have conquered the world. We are, you know, and then something like a pandemic comes along. We, again, we see that we are not so hot after all. But don't look at this world to give it to you. What's faith? Not looking down, but looking up. Right from the beginning, as he ta God talks about faith with Abraham, look up. Don't look at this world, look up. Don't look at the people that are going to kill you because of your wife. Look up. We live in faith, not fear, in this fallen world. Okay? Fear God. Walk wisely. In peace. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for who you are. We do realize the awesome nature of who you are, your character of goodness, your love, but we also understand that you are the God of the universe, that you have and exist in righteousness. And when that righteousness is not according to you, there is something to fear. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Because of faith in him, we don't fear that. But we do walk in faith. Father, help us in this, <clears throat> these times of fear and difficulty and trouble to, to walk in faith, to not focus on this world. Walk in wisdom, yes. But not walk in fear, not <clears throat> wisdom, 
So walk in faith. In Jesus' name, amen.